Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Here we are. This is very strange. Um, last week we were in the Columbine Centre, a nice big building, but now we're tucked in our front room. Um, we, I guess we know a little bit what we're doing, but to be honest, um, I haven't got a clue. Um, <laughs> we're just winging it. Um, I don't even know anybody who's listening to this, but by, in faith I believe people are listening to this anyway. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day, mummies and ladies. We were going to give you these lovely gifts today, but you're just going to have to wait till we're all out of isolation. But have a blessed day anyway, tucked safely in your little homes. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, we just want today to be uh, relaxed. Um, we want to welcome you into our home. And, uh, and I'm sure that we're welcomed into your homes through your TV screens, through your iPads, through your smartphones. Um, we just want to, to connect with you today. Um, we want to, um, to share hope and life and truth with you. So, so as Sarah said, yeah, welcome. Um, if you are a usual member of Coastings family, it's great to reconnect with you. But I'm sure through media, we're probably speaking to many people that have never set foot through um, the Columbine Centre to come to Coastings on a Sunday. So thank you um, for joining with us um, this morning. I just want to read uh, a verse from the Bible. Uh, it was a verse that we had at the beginning part of the year, and it's from Isaiah chapter 43. And uh, it says this, For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? And when we read this, we're thinking, yeah, great, you know, God's going to do some new things in the life of the church this year. Uh, and who would have believed this was part of the new that God wanted to do? So I'm just saying that, just to, just to settle uh, our minds this morning, that actually God knows what the future holds. Um, none of what's happening with coronavirus is a surprise to him. He's totally aware of it. Um, and uh, you know, this morning, we just want to, to encourage you guys this, today that you too can trust in God, that, uh, that although this is new, um, it's a time that God is aware of and we completely re we can rely upon him mm -hmm. and his ability to just to really see us through um, this, this time. Um, that we're all experiencing. Okay, um, I've been told I need to keep looking at the camera, but I'm sure throughout <laughs> the morning I will drift around and look up, look around like this. But um, we're, it's our it's our first time, um, and so um, we may get it wrong. Um, so bear with us. Um, but let's just pray, and then Emily and Joe are going to lead us in in some worship this morning because that's what we do as Christians. We worship. And uh, one of the ways we do that is sing songs. So let's just pray, then I'll hand over to, to Emily and Joe. Lord, I thank you <coughs> that you are here with us in this room today. <coughs> Excuse me. And not only in our room, but you're with everyone in their houses today or in wherever, wherever they're kind of streaming um, this, this time, you are with each one of us. And we thank you, Lord God, for your nearness to us. And Lord, help us to, to be able to worship you today. Help us to be able to to really hear from you today because you want to speak things to us. You want to encourage us today. You want to build faith in our lives today. You want to show us today that you are the source of hope. When everything seems to be collapsing around, I thank you that you never collapse. You never uh, stumble. You're never shaken. And so God, we trust you because that's who you are, the everlasting God. Amen. 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 Let's hand over to Emma and Joe now and lead us in some worship. Okay, before we start worship today, there's just another scripture that I wanted to read um, before we enter in. And um, it's from Psalms 3. And it says, But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety, for the Lord was watching over me. I am not afraid of ten thousand enemies who surround me on every side. Arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God. Victory comes from you, O Lord. May you bless your people. Yeah, God is worthy to be praised this morning. Amen. Those are the truths of that scripture. Just let them sink into your heart. And as we start to sing and give thanks to God for who he is, the unchanging God that is bigger than anything that we can face in this world, um, we just really want to encourage you, wherever you are, to just sing along with us. Amen. Just engage in worship with God this morning because he is worthy of our praise.
sing your own worship.
Lord Jesus, just thank you that you are the peace in the storm. I just thank you that when there seems to be or where there seems to be no way, you are the way maker. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that it's in you that we trust. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we can know you. When everything within this life that we know, that we often put our security in, Lord, when these things of this life are stripped away, I thank you that you will always be, because you are God. You are faithful. You are true. You are the name that's above every other name. You're the one who can save. Lord, today, I thank you that we know you. I thank you that we can trust you. I thank you that we can build our lives on you because you are a stable, firm, solid foundation. And Lord, it's at this time that we thank you that you are our foundation that our life is built on you, that our hope is in you. Lord, I thank you for the many people that during this season of life are going to discover more about you. Lord Jesus, that it's through you that we have access to God as our foundation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did everything in order that we might have God as our foundation. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross. You died cruelly and brutally. Your blood was shed. At that point, a way was made. At that point, you became the way maker, the way by which mankind can have and know God as a true foundation not just for a moment but for eternity Jesus thank you that you by your spirit are amongst us right now you are here and we can know you through accepting Lord Jesus that you did everything for us on the cross you took our sins you took the punishment that is rightfully that should have rightfully come to us you took it all you made a way for us to be in relationship with the living God. Lord, thank you that during this time of turmoil, time of rapid change, our confidence is in you, the one who is the way maker. Lord, we give you praise today. Amen. Amen. It's good to worship the Lord and we we'll just encourage you over these next few weeks, however long we have to remain in our own homes, just to spend time worshipping the Lord like this, to spend time reading your Bible, to spend time developing that relationship that will see us through these times of difficulty. Because um, there's only so much TV that we can watch. There's only so many books that we can read. But we can spend time with God. We will never get tired or never get bored of spending time with our Lord. Um, so over this period of time, let's just do that. Um, Coastal's family, um, we formed WhatsApp groups and so we can encourage each other. Uh, we can build each other up with things that we're discovering as we're reading through the Bible. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll come through this stronger. As church, we'll come through stronger. Um, so let's believe that. Amen. So normally at this time, um, across the Columbine Centre, um, uh, Ignite would go to their rooms and little sparks would go through up to their rooms um, But we don't want the young people to feel left out and so I'm just going to ask Em and Joe now They don't know anything about this so it's a total surprise for them um, So the camera will have to be moved yet again um, So Em and Joe, what's going to be taking place? What are you guys doing um, for, little, for Ignite over the next few weeks? Okay, um, so oh, we've got Instagram page on Ignite um, which most of us young people, our young people 
um, are following already, which is really great. So we'll be hosting content on there in the week. So um, this afternoon there'll be a video up there. So we're going to be still going through the series that we've been going through. Um, so this week we're talking about the Word of God and the importance it is of knowing the Word of God and really being in the Word of God. So yes, that will be good. Um, we'll be doing that. And then on Fridays, we're going to be... Yes, we're going to be bringing you another <laughs> broadcast, if it has to be that way. And it's going to be with creative content. Um, and a lot of fun, so look out for more details on the Instagram page throughout the week, but we'll see you later on Ignite anyway, so that'll be great. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thanks, Liam and Joe, for sharing that. Um, there'll be some more notices at the end uh, of our, what do we call it, streaming service? I don't know. I haven't got quite got the, quite the right terminology, but at the end of our programme, um, there'll be some more notices that Sarah will give to us about things that other things that we can do um, during during this time. But it'd be good um, just to reflect a little bit and have a look at the Word of God uh, because um, the Word of God is, is a living word. It's uh, from the Bible that we draw strength and uh, it's from the Bible that uh, we, we're resourced during this time. And I want to uh, just to turn, if you've got a Bible in front of you, um, and you can look at the Bible, if you, if you can find Psalm 46. I really believe this is a, a current psalm um, for this particular season um, that we're in. And, um, and this psalm totally expresses um, that we can 100% trust in God. During uh, this particular um, season that we're in, uh, this psalm just really runs parallel with it. And the psalmist kind of knew um, similar experiences to what we were experiencing. And... Uh, and we're going to discover as we look at this psalm that that uh, it was God that the psalmist went to. It's, it was it was to God that the psalmist turned to, you know, during times of instability and during times of insecurity. And you know, if you've watched your news this morning or if you've read your news feed on your phone or your tablet, you know, things are changing all the time. Things are shifting. Same as I said at the beginning. You know, who'd have thought that um, we would be doing this today? You know, last week we were across the Columbine Centre and in my mind, you know, I wasn't seeing an end to that. But because the way things have escalated um, because and the seriousness of things, um, it's it's come to this. Um, and, uh, and so we just don't know what the rest of this week holds. We don't know what next month holds. We don't actually know what the future holds. But this morning as we dig into this psalm very briefly, we will see someone who, do know, who does know what the future holds. And that someone is God. As we've just been singing about, he's the one who we can build our lives on. I don't know um, what you've been building your life on up until this point. Um, security, financial security, your homes, um, your health. Uh, you know, all, all those things and many more uh, up until recently have been in place. But, but gradually, as the weeks have gone on, you know, they've begun to be kind of stripped away. And, and it was okay when it was across in China. It was okay when it was in Italy, although that's getting a little bit close. And you know, we kind of we distance ourselves from it because you know the the, the news is like, well, that's that's got a few thousand miles away. But actually, now the situation we're in it, it's current to us. Um, there's really no escape. And you know, through what's happening now, it's it helps us to see the um, the seriousness of what's taking place. And my prayer is, and, and my hope is that as we appreciate the seriousness of this situation, perhaps we really take a step nearer to God. We, 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 kind of, we, we make a movement that actually gets us deeper into God. Because all the stuff that we perhaps once used to get close to because of how it satisfied us, because of how it gave us what we were looking for, now that's been removed. My prayer is that as church and as a nation... And as a community, we actually make steps closer to God. And when we do this, we won't be disappointed. When we do this, we won't miss out, but actually we'll gain because God has got so much that he wants to pour into our lives. God has got a wealth of treasure that almost we've just scratched the surface of it. And through this time, I believe God wants, to, wants us to go deeper and just explore the treasure that he has for us. And as we look at Psalm 46 this morning, very briefly, and um, we're going to just really discover how this psalmist uh, discovered some of this treasure. And it starts off, so if you've got Psalm 46, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, 
and uh, I'll probably just break it down as we go through these verses and uh, we'll just unpack briefly some of the words because um, it's really exciting as you can see I'm excited I'm animated about the word and I want you to be excited about what you're reading so often the Bible has been looked upon as a dull book a book that hasn't got any any excitement about it but believe you me it carries treasure it carries a depth of wealth that that we can completely rely on because God is the author of this book it's not written by man yes man may have been holding the pen but it was God through his spirit that was inspiring the writing of the word so if you've had an opinion the Bible's dull and dead and a dusty book that kind of sits at the end of a bookshelf take it off the bookshelf and over these next few weeks begin to read it and discover the treasure that's in the Bible. It's right there in your front room. It's right there up in your loft. You've got nothing else to do. Pull the loft ladder down. Get up. Find a Bible. Dust it off. Sit down. Begin to read it. And before you read it, pray, God, I believe now this is your word. Speak to me from it. And do you know what? He will. Here we go. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. Let's just stop there for a moment. God is. It's not that God could be or God should be. It's God is. The psalmist was confident that this is who God is. God is our refuge and our strength. What's a, what's a refuge? It's, it's a place of safety. It's a place of shelter from danger. We're in dangerous times. We can stay in our house. We can shut the door. We can use our house as a place of refuge and a place of shelter. But actually what God is saying through this, you can do that, but he's encouraging us to take another step. He's encouraging us to come to him and say, God, we're in desperate times. Yes, I'm, I'm secure in my house, but there's still an element of fear. But we can come to God. God, you are my refuge. I'm coming to you because in you, I can truly find shelter. I can truly find my security, all that I need during these times of uncertainty, during these storms of life, it's to you I can run. God is our refuge and strength. Hey, we need strength to keep going, don't we? We need strength to keep on going through these times. And again, I'm encouraging you to take hold of what God says in his word here. Come to him for your refuge and your strength. Draw strength from him to keep going, to keep on going. You know, some we've just been out in the shops, um, just getting a few provisions, and you can really see people, their expressions, there's, there's desperations on their expressions, and they're almost, they're kind of scrabbing, scrab they're kind of scrabbing, that's not such a word, is it? Yeah. They're scrabbling for things, you can see fear in their eyes, and People are, are lacking strength at this time. That they're, they're lacking a place of refuge. God is our refuge. God is our strength. And this is where as believers we can model something different. As believers we can model that, yeah, this is all going on. And I'm in the world so it's affecting me. But actually, I know God is my refuge. I know God is my shelter during this time of danger. I know God is my strength. I know God in his power enabling me to get through to the other side. It goes on to say that God is always ready to help in times of trouble. This is a time of trouble. And what does it say? God is always ready to help. Isn't that good? That God is always ready to help. Have you cried out to him? Have you cried out to him, God, help me during this time? Have you voiced your heart cry to God? Have you opened your mouth and have you just told him, God, I need your help. Our community needs your help. The UK needs your help. Globally, we need your help. Come on, church, people, open our mouths, cry out to God. Verse 2, so we will not fear when earthquakes come and when mountains crumble into the sea. Can you see the psalmist says, we will not fear. And so for us, we would say, 
We will not fear when the coronavirus virus comes into the UK. We will not fear when the coronavirus comes into Tendring. We will not fear when the coronavirus comes into Kirby, Clacton, Frinton, Walton. We will not fear. Can you see that when we're in this place with God, we can confidently say, hey, I'm not going to fear. And again, another thing that I notice when I'm out and about, I actually think that, that, that fear has become greater than the virus itself. The way that things are being cleared off supermarket shelves is because of fear. So again, as Christians, as believers, let's not be ruled by fear. Let's not be controlled by that fear. But let's know that God is our refuge and our strength. You know, the psalmist really kind of, he goes to the extremes, doesn't he? And he says, even when earthquakes come, even if a mountain crumbles into the sea, I will not fear. And he goes on to say in verse 3, come on, let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters serve. He says, bring it on. I will not be afraid. And as we look anywhere in the Bible, as we turn back into the Old Testament, as we look in the New Testament, we see God as being a faithful God. We see God uh, true to his word. And when we go through stuff, and we do go through stuff, God is there with us. I just love verse 4. I just love where the psalmist now takes it. And uh, I want us just to really kind of embrace the, this verse and, uh, and just really allow this to become a part of our experience today. He goes to say, A river bring jo brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. And you know what? A river um, was really crucial to cities. A river would enable trade to be... Um, moved about between different cities uh, it would it, it would enable the, uh, the the people to be um, kind of uh, successful and uh, you know deals could be done between city and city so it enabled a city to flourish it enabled a city to survive and grow but this city that the psalmist is referring to here is the city of Jerusalem and Jerusalem didn't have a river but what the psalmist is saying hey Jerusalem, you may not have a city, but you've got God. And the psalmist is saying, God is like the river. And we could take the word city out. It's okay to do that. Uh, and we could put the word church in that gap. And it says, a river brings joy to the church of God. And so this, during this season of time, we can know that river of God that the psalmist was talking about. We can know that river of God coming through us. We can know that river of God flowing into our lives, flowing through our homes. And it says it's this river that brings joy. It's this river that brings life. It's this river that brings hope. It's this, it's this river that releases all of heaven into our lives and into our homes. Verse 5 goes on to say, God dwells in that city, or God dwells in his church. Um, it says, it cannot be destroyed, for from the very break of day, God will protect it. So can you see the excitement of this scripture? Can you see the excitement of this verse? Can you see, can you see that, that, that the hope and the life that just flows through the river of God? Do you know the river of God in your life? Do you know the river of God flowing through your home today? Is it a deep desire, a deep longing that you have? As you cry out to him, Lord, release your river into my life. Release your river into my home. Lord Jesus, everything that I knew has been just stripped away from me. I want that river that's teeming with life. The river, of, the river that's not determined by what happens in this world because that river flows from almighty God verse 6 goes on to say the nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble God's voice thunders and the earth melts the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us isn't that so good 
that even though we see all of this taking place just as it's written in this psalm, the nations are indeed in chaos. You know, we wouldn't argue about that. The nations are in chaos. There's kingdoms that are crumbling, but God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. Isn't that encouraging? Isn't that um, just so pleasing to hear? Doesn't that kind of change the way we see things on the earth? Doesn't that just, yeah, that just changes the way that we see life? Because God is here. The Lord of heaven's armies is here. Verse 8. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. So the writer of this, he's just now recounting from his experience the way he's seen God move in situations, the way he's heard about God just miraculously and, and supernaturally kind of breaking in to um, horrendous circumstances. He's seen God bring people through adversity. He has seen God do amazing things. Verse 10, familiar verse to some, but maybe for some people listening to this today, it's the first time you've heard it, but you know what? You need to hear it. And it says this, be still and know that I am God. Again, over the next few weeks, this is something that we're not only going to be able to do, but it's something that we'll perhaps have no choice over. And it's something that we'll need to do. Be still and know that I am God. I just love those few words. Be still. As I'm speaking, just allow that whole sense of appreciating when God says be still, what that looks like. It means just to, to let go. But actually, a lot of the letting go has been taken out of our hands because it's been removed. But just let go. Just let go of all those things that we've built our lives upon. Just let go of all those things we've acquired. Those things that we've thought were necessary to live by those things have just gone and God says be still and know that I am God how do you know God have you got a, a, a kind of a, a a knowledge of God in your head do you just know about God because You've heard about him perhaps in school. You've heard about him perhaps when you used to go to Sunday school. You've heard your parents talk about him. You've heard your grandparents talk about him. Occasionally you've been to church and you've heard about God. And so you've got a head knowledge of God. But actually when the psalmist is writing this, what is wanting us to embrace is actually knowing God not only in our heads but actually having a knowing of God in the very core of our being. He's encouraging a, a knowing of God that changes not just our surroundings but actually changes the very inside of us. Actually knowing God to the, to the degree that from the inside out we become brand new people. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Let's just pray, shall we? Lord, as we just meet in this way strange as though it may seem you are here with us and Lord I pray for each home now 
each space that people are watching you, Lord, I just ask that there would be a heart cry to you during these troubled days, during these uncertain days. There'd be a cry out to you, God, be my refuge, be my strength. I recognise that you're ready to hear the cry of my heart. I recognise that you're the one who can assist me and can lead me and can carry me through these times of trouble. Lord, you know my fears. You know the reality of my fears. But God, I'm coming to you now because I want to give my fears to you. I want that river of life. I want to tap into that river of life. I want you to be the source of my life, Lord. Everything else has been stripped away. I want you now, God, to be the river of life that not only comes into, into my home, but comes into the very centre of who I am. I want you to be dwelling within me. I want you to live on the inside of me. I'm going to be still, God, before you. I'm going to let go of all the stuff that I've depended upon. I'm going, to, I'm going to invite you, God, through Jesus, to come into my life. Something needs to happen. Something needs to change. And maybe you've been shouting at your telly when the politicians have been kind of talking about what they've been talking about. Maybe you've been kind of kicking off around the supermarkets about the fact that the shelves are not got enough stuff on it you're looking for something to change but let me just encourage you this morning maybe we need to change maybe i need to change maybe you need to change and this is the first place to come come to jesus change me jesus change me jesus Come into my life, Jesus. Set me free, Jesus, from all of these fears. He'll do that. There's a blessing in the Old Testament. In Numbers chapter 6, and it's verses 24 to 26. Emily and Joe in a moment are going to sing a song that's based on this blessing. And it says this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and give you his peace as they sing this song and as the words are on the screen just receive this blessing into your own hearts receive this blessing into your family maybe if, if you're a family together today just just stand and just receive the blessing just receive this new thing that God is doing in your family at this time. Because this, this is something new. This is something fresh. Just receive the blessing into your home and into your life today. Let's just worship with this song led by um, Joe and Emily now.
receive that blessing as from the Lord into your household this morning. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and give you peace. Lord, I thank you that you cover us as your children. Thank you that you embrace us. Thank you that we know you during this time. Lord, we give you all the praise today forevermore. Amen. 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 Um, we have some more um, notices and Sarah's going to uh, share those with you now. Okay. Yeah, just a couple of notices. Um, today is, the church has called it to be a national day of prayer. And um, if you read in 2 Chronicles, it says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven Amen. and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Amen. And as a church Amen. across this nation, yeah. that is what Amen. we're going to be praying. We're going to be praying that God would heal our land. Amen. And so tonight at seven o'clock, we're lighting candles mm. and we're placing them in a visible place. Be careful, put it in a safe place. Um, <laughs> but we're going to be praying. We're going to be praying for the people of this nation and across the nations. We're going to be praying for the government. We're going to be praying for those that are already sick. 
We're going to be praying for those that are in isolation. We're going to be praying for those who are working, just working so hard at this time, yeah, reaching yeah. out to people that are in desperate situations in the hospital. We're going to be praying. Yeah. So if you would just join with us and pray. Yeah, um, yeah. At 7 o'clock tonight, light those candles. There's a visible sign of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, yeah. the yeah. Saviour to all. So yeah. that's what we're going to be doing as a church across this nation because the church is not a building. Mm. The church Amen. is the people. Amen. We are the yeah. people. Yeah. We are the church. And yeah. we're praying for yeah. this nation. We're praying That's for good. this community. Yeah. Yeah. And I just love, there's a, there's a line in the song we sung earlier and it says, it says, and fill me with your hearts. Talking about God. God, fill our hearts and lead me in your love to those around me. Now is the time for the church to really shine. Yeah, now yeah. is the time for the church to really stand yeah, up. Yeah. Now there's going to be there's those who can't leave their house. So as a church, we've got some who are in isolation, and they're going to be they're setting up a phone line that they're going to be sitting there waiting for people to call them. There's the phone line will be going out on the online on the internet, and it'll be going in the Look magazine. Mm -hmm. And so for people that are isolated mm -hmm. and lonely and scared at this time, they can ring that phone line. And there's going to be people that are in the same situation but they know Jesus who are going to pick up the phone and be there to speak to them. That's right. And also as a church across this area, where is it? The, bing, <laughs> the card is gone. Well, anyway, we have got um, across the churches, Frint and Walton churches together, we're working together as one church. And we're going to be setting up a, again. There's going to be phone a phone line um, that people are going to be able to ring up if they are in isolation and they need help with some basic essentials. So, as church, um, Coastlands Church, if you are somebody who would be willing to man a phone for a day, or if you're willing to go out and do the shopping and pick up the prescriptions, then could you please uh, give us a call? You you know you know our number. Um, if you could. Call Call us and say yes I'm up for doing that and then we can pass your name on That's to right. the coordinator and as churches together mm -hmm. we're going to reach out to our community and really love our community because that is God's heart so bless you thank you for joining us this this week mm -hmm. and we will be here again next week mm -hmm. so every blessing and continue to keep looking to God and drawing your strength from him yeah yeah also if there's anything else um, that that uh, we've spoken today that you'd like to chat more over um, then um, either um, you can message us on uh, Facebook a private message or you can email us directly from our website uh, or you can ring us up uh, office number is on the website and uh, we're more than happy just to have a conversation and chat with you you know during these difficult times um, so thank you so much for joining us and uh, we look forward to being in touch throughout the week and we're not quite sure what next week will look like, um, but we will do something. So God bless you all and have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. <laughs>